when should you signal to be a safe driver and to pass the driving test in the UK? In this video, whenever I talk about signaling, I'm referring to your indicators, your orange flashing lights on either side of the car. Americans call them blinkers. I'm not gonna be referring to other important signals such as brake lights, position, and speed, just to keep this video simple and about one topic. If you want to get yourself most of the way there, follow these two rules. Rule number one, no signal is better than a misleading signal. If you think your use of the indicator is misleading, it's better not to use it because misleading signals are often dangerous, whereas not signaling can be dangerous, but it's just usually inconvenient. It's certainly rarely as dangerous as a misleading signal. That's how boxers land their punch. They try to look like they're coming in from the left, but then they come in from the right. Don't drive like that. And for rule number two, I need to get going. Rule number two is to signal for the unexpected, not the expected. So I have some parked cars around this bend. Everybody expects me to go round the parked cars at my earliest convenience. So there's no need for me to use the indicator. Indicating would simply look like I'm going to turn right if there was a road on the right, or maybe drive into a driveway or even park on the other side of the road. However, no one is expecting me to park. So if I'm planning to park before one of these parked cars, then I would signal. If you're planning to pull over at the side of the road and park, then using your indicator is crucial. If there's people behind, it will help them know you're about to stop unexpectedly. They don't expect you to park, therefore they can slow down and make plans to drive around you. If there's pedestrians in front of you, they now know that you're stopping at the side of the road that can help them judge whether or not it's safe to cross. And also even with oncoming cars, if the oncoming car knows you're parking, that can help them make better decisions as well. However, if you check your mirrors and there's no one around you behind and in front, then there's no need to signal. Having said that, sometimes it can be a good idea to signal when you're waiting to pass parked cars, particularly if you're worried that the car approaching from behind has mistaken you to be a parked car and is planning to pass you. When moving away from the side of the road, if there's someone coming up behind, you shouldn't signal because you should wait for them. You shouldn't ask them to wait for you. If there are people in front like this pedestrian, then you should signal because you're telling them that you're driving up the road and that they should not cross the road in front of you because it's your priority when you drive up there. You should signal to the oncoming cars as well because again, it is your priority to use this side of the road. So it warns them not to move out to go around parked cars. However, if they're already passing a parked car, you should wait. So you should signal to people in front to warn them not to cross the road in front of you and to warn them not to drive into your pathway so they know that you're about to get going, but you shouldn't signal to people behind because you can't ask them to let you out. You should wait for them. However, if it's really busy and it's queued traffic, then you can use the signal to ask. So if this was a queue of traffic here and I wanted to move into that queue, then I could indicate right and ask them to let me out. If you look round and there's no one around at all, then there's no need to signal. If there's a car waiting behind you due to oncoming traffic, then you can signal to move away because you're actually helping in this situation. You're not making them break. At junctions, it's very important to signal because nobody knows which way you are going. If there are two junctions close together and you wanna take the second one, do not signal before the first. If I was to signal now and someone was waiting to come out of this junction, they may think I'm pulling in and then they'll pull out in front of me, which would be dangerous. So I make sure I've passed the junction first before I signal. Many learner drivers make the mistake of not slowing down when they need to delay their signal. So you have two junctions close together. The learner wants to take the second junction, but they know they can't signal until they have passed the first junction. So what do they do? They don't signal and they don't slow down and they end up braking quite harshly, which is dangerous. It's okay to check your mirrors, 
slow down, even change gear if necessary, and signal when it's not misleading and when it is safe. You don't have to signal before you brake. If you need to slow down, slow down. If you're at a Y junction and your angle makes it obvious which way you're going, like here, it's really obvious I'm turning left, you don't need to signal. Also here, it would be misleading because signaling left will make it look like I'm going in there and I'm not. It's also important to cancel your signal after a junction before it becomes misleading. For example, I'm going left at this mini roundabout, but I'm not taking the left immediately after it, so I will need to cancel my signal as soon as possible. So now I'm gonna get going, cancel the signal, so it doesn't look like I'm taking this left. If two lanes are merging into one as they are now, then a signal will help others know your intentions. Also try not to block the traffic light crossing here, but they're all moving now, so I know I'll make it. And then a little hand up to say thank you does go a long way. When merging with a motorway or a dual carriageway, it's important to signal so that you stand out more to people already on the main road. Although on this occasion, it looks like I've just merged into a queue of traffic. If you're at speed on a motorway or dual carriageway and have to slow down significantly, like I just did then with the traffic in front, it's a good idea to put your hazard warning lights on long enough so people behind notice that there is a hazard ahead. I didn't on that occasion because there was no one behind me and as there was no one behind me, there was no need. When leaving a motorway or a dual carriageway, it's advised that you signal by these three lines. However, given the fact that I'm doing seven miles an hour, I will be signaling for a very long time. So on this occasion, I'm gonna leave it until a little bit later. In traffic, if you want to change lane, you can signal and ask people to let you in. However, if it's flowing traffic, you shouldn't. You should wait for an opportunity because you should not cause other people to brake, not by pulling out in front of them and not with your signal. But in queue traffic like this, you don't have much choice. Okay, I can see the slip road now, so I'm gonna to indicate to tell people that I'm leaving. So again, I'm indicating right to merge with this traffic so that they can see me, I'm more noticeable, that way they can help me. And I'm gonna indicate right again to go into the right lane because there is a very slow moving vehicle up ahead, this tractor. There's also people in front and people behind, so the signal warns them that I'm changing lane. However, if there's no one around and you want to change lane, then there's no need to signal. Just signal left then to change back to the left lane. Laurie behind me, he needs to know what I'm doing. At roundabouts, signal left if you're going left and taking the first exit. If you're going ahead at a roundabout, and ahead being up to and including 12 o'clock, but not the first exit, don't signal on approach and signal left as you pass the penultimate exit. If you don't know what penultimate exit means, it's the exit before the one that you are taking. If you're going right at a roundabout and right being past 12 o'clock, then you signal right on approach and again, you'll signal left just as you're passing the penultimate exit. At this roundabout, I'm going right. My exit is past 12 o'clock, so I'm indicating right. If it was 12 o'clock, I wouldn't indicate, but as it's to the right of 12 o'clock, I will indicate right. And I'll be in the right lane as I go around this roundabout. But I will need to move to the left lane before I leave. So I'm in the right lane going round, taking the third exit. That's exit one I'm passing now. I'm coming up to exit two now. So centre left mirror, left signal, and drift to the left lane now so that I'm ready to leave. I'm leaving the signal on to the left so people know 
that I'm leaving the roundabout here. At mini roundabout, signal left to go left, signal right to go right, and there's no need to signal if you're going ahead. There's also no need to signal to leave a mini roundabout because there's not enough time for that signal to help anyone. Also, the roads are so close together that your signal on approach is enough to tell anyone which way you're going. It's imperative that you signal right when turning right at a mini roundabout because if you don't, oncoming cars won't know that you're going round and therefore they won't wait for you. That's why the black car waited and that's why these pedestrians waited because they knew I was going round the roundabout. If you want to park in a car park and there's cars behind you, indicate in the direction of the space you want, so this space on the right, so I'm indicating right, and pause next to the space. Then you can see if the car's going to wait or drive past you. If they wait, you can swing the car out, so your back is pointing towards the space, and then reverse in. When you want to parallel park, signal and stop next to the space you want to let the car behind know your intentions. Then you can pull forwards, Hopefully the car behind leaves you room to do your manoeuvre. When you get the opportunity to pass a cyclist, make sure you check your centre and right mirror first. And if you feel it's necessary, you can signal. But if you feel it's obvious you're about to pass the cyclist, then there's no need. When it comes to signalling, you have to use your head. You can't just think, oh, I must signal every time in this situation, or I can never signal in that situation. You have to think. Is your signal helpful or is it misleading? And you have to decide whether or not you think a signal is appropriate. You can fail the driving test for missing just one signal. Yes, one. But somebody else could pass having missed five signals. And you may be thinking, how is that fair? Well, it depends on how important the signal is. If you miss a signal and that causes danger, then you will fail. But if you miss a signal and it doesn't cause danger, it just causes inconvenience, then you will still likely pass but get a driving fault or a minor driving fault as they used to be called. You can get up to 15 minor driving faults on the driving test and still pass, but that's an absolute maximum. And they rarely pass you if you get more than five driving faults for the same thing. When it comes to making your own decisions, you can't solely rely on the indicator of other drivers. You do have to look at their speed and position as well and take it all into account to decide which way they're going. However, sometimes on some junctions, the only way you can tell which way someone is going is with the indicator, in which case you are solely relying on it. The DVSA do want you to use the indicator to judge whether or not you can go. If you ignore the indicator and don't take opportunities based off the indicator, you will fail. If you're waiting at a mini roundabout, someone's signaling to say, well, they're not coming round, you can go, but you wait until they actually turn, by which time it's too late for you to go because the next car's coming and you keep doing that. Well, you, you can't do that. You do have to use the indicator to some extent. I actually had a pupil on a mini roundabout once who pulled out in front of the car because that car was not signaling. The car turned right at the mini roundabout without indicating. The examiner had to use the dual control brake to stop the pupil. I was sitting behind the pupil. I used the imaginary dual control brake as well, just out of a reflex of, oh crikey, car coming, hit the brake. There's no brake back there. The examiner then said, yes, there's no brake back there, Richard. And then he went to the pupil that car thought you were psychic, didn't they? I'll give you back the control of the car now. Continue when you want to. She didn't fail. It was near the end of her test. It was not her fault. There was no way of knowing that car was coming round the mini roundabout. Their position and speed for going straight or coming round is exactly the same. It's just the signal. So the examiner recognised this and still passed her. However, if somebody's signal looks wrong in comparison to their speed and position, in those situations, it's best to ignore the signal and use their speed and position for your decision. Well, I hope this video helps you understand when to signal to be a safe driver and to pass the driving test in the UK. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up. Check out Conningwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Collingwood can help you without affecting the owner's policy. Via the link at the moment, that's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. 
If you want to insure your own car, check out confuse.com. You fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back to see who is cheapest when it comes to insuring your car. Also, you can change the car on that quote as many times as you like to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Handy if you're thinking of buying a car. Check out Facebook and Instagram if you wish. I'm trying to upload some theory test questions on there at the moment and subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.